everybody. Thanks for joining me for another one-man review. Today I'll be taking a look at Night Fever. This is out from Image Comics. It's the new Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips book. Uh, we don't talk about the mainstream stuff on the channel as much, but I, I do really enjoy Brubaker and Phillips going all the way back to their work at Wildstorm on Sleeper. So always excited to get new stuff by them. And I just got this in the mail and thought it was a particularly good one of their works, and so I wanted to talk about it. Also, I think this one... I would be very surprised if this isn't a movie within the next year or two, or if it doesn't get an option at least, because the story, and I'll point out the pages, I don't want to give too much away in this book because it's brand new, so we'll try and keep it fairly spoiler free, just a base plot summary, but there, there is a real strong evidence, I think, in this book that this is something that's intended to be a movie or a film at some point soon, uh, a TV show, I mean, sorry. So anyways... It's typical, I mean, I think it, everyone knows Brubaker and Phillips. I don't need to dis describe their formula that they have, and uh, I don't need to describe kind of like the strengths of Sean Phillips' artwork or anything like that. Particularly like his collaboration with his son Jacob Phillips on color. Uh, that Jacob Phillips is a great colorist. He's also a great artist in his his own right with his own book that's, that's pretty good. Um, I do kind of miss Elizabeth Breitweister on... Sean Phillips art, but uh, Jacob Phillips does a very good job kind of carrying over some of the textural and um, strange colors and things like that. These these like overlap areas and things that she brought to the table with Phillips work that I think brought his work to the next level. And so it's good to see his own kid. You know, that's a cool collaboration. You're working with your son and you're working on a book together and his son carried that forward and made it into his own thing. So that's really cool. Uh, always like seeing that. Now, this story is very, uh, like, all fits into this one. It's not one of, it doesn't seem at least like it's part of Criminals or Reckless or something like that. That's a longer series. It's like a one-and-done story. I quite like that. I mean, I like their longer form work as well. But I think especially for the quant crime noir stuff, this, this works very well. In this book also, it takes like a kind of different twist where you don't really feel like you're in a quant crime noir story at first. It's more... A drama about this character here who's uh, going to a book convention and he's basically a salesperson for the international rights on books I think is what it is and you get this opening sequence where there's this new book that's coming out from this up-and-coming author then they really the company really believes it's gonna land and this guy is kind of cursorily reading it and realizes that a dream that's described as a recurring dream of the character in the first chapter of the book is actually a recurring dream that he's had his whole life. So he starts to kind of get caught up in that. And then while he's at a the book convention, uh, he just kind of starts following some people because he's bored. He's you know he's been in his job forever. He's bored of his job, and so he just kind of follows some people and then lies his way into this underground party obviously for very wealthy people it's a very like eyes wide shut type of drugs and sex and uh, you know you know this just kind of ex excess of the extremely wealthy but he's lied his way into it and that's kind of where I'll stop you know that that lying his way into this world that he doesn't belong in and uh, kind of having the hubris to tell himself the type of story that he needs to tell himself to believe that he could continue operating successfully in this world is pretty much dr what drives the plot forward. Uh, so I'll leave it at that in terms of a description of the plot. There uh, are a few things in the book that I wanted to point out. The first one is just right here where he's getting involved, he's getting sucked into a crime for the first time, and he's talking about crime is the biggest high in the world. And I just wrote, like, I bet, I can imagine, like, getting away with something you shouldn't get away with, especially something where you have massive amounts of adrenaline pumping through, and then you get away with it, and the excitement of that. Um, yeah, like, I, I could see the appeal in that. And that's what this story really is to me, and I'll, I'll flip to... Uh, this page here just because we do want to celebrate Sean and Jacob Phillips's art and I think that this like montage scene here just really shows the strength of both. Um, Phillips is always just a pretty like straightforward storyteller for the most part but when he does play with composition and stuff like that I think he's always really really successful so I'm always excited 
when he gets a little bit more experimental with his compositions and then with Jacob's kind of intense saturated colors and things like that. I just really like the design of this page. The other thing about this page is I think it sets the tenor for what this book is trying to be and why I say that I think this has got to be headed towards getting optioned as a movie because it's very much written and the character, this main character here is drawn and this this image here I even believe is probably taken from the movie Nobody. So it was really hard for me to read this not thinking that this is either going to be a TV show with Brian Cranston, which you can tell this very much looks like Brian Cranston as we know him from Breaking Bad, or Bob Odenkirk. So those those two characters that kind of always play the they were both from Breaking Bad, you know, uh, you both have Walter and uh, Saul Goodman in those two characters. And they've both kind of played these characters that are like the every man who breaks bad. Uh, same with Saul, right? You have this guy, Saul Goodman, better call Saul, who's kind of, or the nobody character, you know, he's kind of like a schlubby guy, but then he turns out to be a badass. Um, I think that's a, a real fantasy for a lot of dudes right now. I think that Breaking Bad tapped into this fantasy of a bunch of uh, adults who have sold themselves like this character has into a career, into taking care of a family and all of that stuff, and that they're not actually happy with it. And, or, or, you know, they're happy with it, but there's some part of themselves, there's the wolf inside of themselves, uh, the real kind of aggressive testosterone driven side of themselves that's not getting attention and that's what those stories are to me is it's a it's a fantasy for someone and what was crazy with Breaking Bad is watching guys like my dad and everyone in his age the same age group as Walter become obsessed about this show because it's like they wanted to be the guy that was badass like that they wanted to know they could be that guy and I have that as well you know like I've I went and trained MMA for like a year, but never had a fight. Um, and I've never really gotten in street fights or anything. So there's part of me that wants to know. I want to know, can I fuck somebody up? You know, am I willing to do these things to get what I want to protect my own, like to protect Tori and Jack or whatever? What would I be willing to do? Could I handle a situation like this? I think there's a lot of people that want to know that about themselves in the world. And so when you get stories like this or Breaking Bad or... Uh, Mr. Nobody, all those kind of stories. It's this fantasy where it's like, okay, like a guy like me could break and I could fuck somebody up. I could, uh, you know, be the one who knocks. And this is very much that type of book about someone um, trying to find their darkness and what their limits are. And then to have the characters like this, I'm pretty sure is directly from the, the poster for that, that movie, no, Mr. Nobody or Nobody or whatever that with Bob Odenkirk. And to have them look like Brian Cranston kind of, it just feels very intentional on the part of Phillips and Brubaker. Whether that just be them trying to tap into what they see as a, a genre in crime fiction right now that they want to mess with or whether they're actually trying to get this made into a movie or something, I don't know. But that's what reading this book struck me as, is tangential to like Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, Mr. Nobody, um, these every man turned into a badass type of story. Or this idea of people wanting to explore their darker self and see how far they're really capable of going. So it's, it's a really interesting book, and I would be really surprised if, uh, given their success and their, their fame as graphic novelists, that this isn't optioned for a Netflix show or something like that in the future. So really cool book. Uh, probably everyone watching this knows their opinion about Brubaker and Phillips yet. So if you like them, go get it. If you don't like them, don't get it. It's the typical stuff for them. Anyways, if you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us, there's two ways to do that. The first way is through our Patreon. We have two different tiers of engagement on the Patreon. At the first tier, you just get early access to our videos. At the second tier, you get previews, uh, exclusive previews of the process work that Sean and I have for the books that we're working on currently, as well as the ability to participate in our ongoing webcomic experiment, Pranade, where you can vote to help determine what happens next in the story. We really appreciate that support. Uh, the money that we get from Patreon helps us buy the books that we review, so it helps keep this whole thing rolling and puts the money back into other publishers and creators' pockets, so we really appreciate that. If you want to support Living the Line itself, the best thing to do is support what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing, so we'll go ahead and take a look at one of his books now. House on Fire by Matt Battaglia is a just gorgeous book where Matt's kind of making an emotional response to the the years of COVID and wrapping that into a sci-fi dystopian future 
that really the sci-fi dystopians backgrounded and you're fo focused on the emotional journey of two characters in a really beautiful way. And then that's enhanced by Matt's like really awesome, loose, kind of Paul Popish um, dry brush work. And then Sh Sean and Matt have worked to get this second kind of orange spot color in there that's going to look really, really beautiful and it has allowed Matt to use his dry brush technique to add tone to the thing too. So um, with Sean's production technique, this is going to be a gorgeous book with a lot of heart. <laughs> Like and subscribe and hit the bell, please, so Carson can finish reading his books and let me go home. <laughs>